Hi, I'm going to help you compare and contrast the use of film since 1945 with 19th century popular art. Since you already know some things about 19th century art, we'll start with a review of that. Before, because you should already know this stuff, feel free to write down as much as you can think of, even if I don't specifically say or show the painter or painting you're thinking of. Romanticism emerged as a response to the disillusionment with enlightened values of reason and order in the aftermath of the French Revolution. It dealt with the powers of nature and self-portraits from behind, especially in the case of Caspar Frederic. Realism artists discard the formulas of neoclassicism and the theatrical dramas of romanticism to paint familiar scenes and events as they actually looked. They celebrate working class and peasants. Colbert and Millet are the most notable artists from this movement. Impressionism attempted to record visual reality in terms of transient effects of light and color. Monet came back to the same spot at different times of the day or at different times of the year to paint the same scene. He never copied himself because the light and color always changed with the passage of time, and the variations made each painting a new creation. Symbolism focused on the validity of pure subjectivity and the expression of an idea over a realistic depiction of the natural world. Gustav Klimt was the most noble figure in this movement, although his best work came in the 20th century. Post-impressionism expressed emotions rather than simply optical impressions, concentrating on themes of deeper symbolism. Through the use of simplified colors and definitive forms, this style was characterized by a renewed aesthetic sense as well as an ab tendencies. Cezanne is the name you should know. How was this art used? As an example, Brokart was used to glorify the king and the church in an almost propaganda-ish way. So, how was art used in this time period? You can answer this question now by pausing the video, or come back to it later when you have time. Now let's talk about film. Since we're focusing on film after 1945, sound was already the norm. When writing down examples, make sure to write down details like the use of lighting, sound, camera angles, and other things that make a film into an art form. Think about what the director might have been trying to achieve. The sound is a little bit off on all of these recordings, so sorry about that. The Layers movement had its theoretical roots in Dadaism and Surrealism. Many of the earlier works centered around letters and other visual or spoken symbols. Romanian immigrant Isidore Izzu started the movement in the 1940s in Paris. The most famous letterist movie is Motion Painting No. 1 by Oscar Fischinger, which is stop motion of an oil painting being made with classical music playing in the background. Unfortunately, it's not available on YouTube, so what you're seeing now is an optical poem, which is an earlier work of his using paper. The music is Franz Liszt's Second Hungarian Rhapsody. Italian New Realism was a film movement characterized by stories set among the poor and the working class, filmed on location, and frequently used non-professional actors. Italian Neo Realist films mostly contend with the difficult economic and moral conditions of Italian life after World War II, representing changes that the, in the Italian psyche and the conditions of everyday life, including poverty, oppression, injustice, and desperation. The Bicycle Thieves is a still famous film produced by this movement. In the European art cinema style, the continuity editing system is not necessarily abandoned, but instead is not needed. The cause and effect driven narrative, as well as the goal oriented protagonists, are also not needed. Instead, the protagonist may wander around aimlessly for the whole movie, with nothing of real importance happening to drive him from one activity to another. European art cinema's goal is to be ambiguous, utilizing an open ended plot causing the audience to ask questions themselves while so introducing an element of subjectivity. There's a lot of overlap between this movement and the French New Wave movement. The Wall is a really weird movie by Pink Floyd. It's about a rock star who's haunted by his past and his television set, and slowly going crazy. It becomes hard to separate what actually happened to him in the past from what he's just imagining. Premodernist film calls for a return to emotional and spiritual meaning in cinema, as well as an emphasis on new ideas of narrative structure and subjectivity. The beauty of imperfection, and the awareness of the transience of things and the bittersweet feelings that accompany their passing, were thought to have the ability to show the truth of existence, and the Remodernist Manifesto states that they should always be considered when making a film. Closure of Catharis is about a man trying to remember a trauma from his past which he has repressed. Mysterious images intervene, overturning the serenity of the park bench monologue. 
Just as you wrote about how art was used, consider how film was used. These types of films weren't meant to simply entertain, so what were they trying to achieve? Did any of those film movements remind you of art movements you saw in the first half of the video? Did any film movements go directly against an art movement? You should probably write yourself a thesis.